Welcome back everyone. So today's the day I'm going to start overwintering some of my tropical plants in the garden. Some of these will include canna lilies, bananas, colocasia and caladiums, gunnera, dahlias. The nighttime temperatures are starting to drop now and it's getting pretty chilly at night although it's still quite mild down here in the south of the UK so we're quite lucky. But last year I actually left it too late to film the overwintering because it was raining for weeks on end so I didn't actually get a chance to show you how I overwinter my plants. So this year I thought I'd get a bit of a head start and just begin overwintering some of the plants, not all of them. So I'm just going to take you around the garden and show you how I overwinter them. I already covered up my bar and the garden furniture a couple of weeks ago because we have had some very wet weather and I just wanted to get them covered up. But I think for October the garden is still looking pretty nice. I'm just going to show you what's in the border on this side before I start doing anything. The cannas are still looking really beautiful and they are still producing flowers so I am going to leave some of the cannas. I will be digging up the red Abyssinian bananas. The Passifloras are still flowering and producing fruit. The flowers are kind of tucked in behind. Let's see if I can get in. The old leaves on the muses are looking a bit tatty now, although they are still producing new leaves. You can see the hibiscus here is looking a bit sad. It's finished flowering now, it's starting to die off. Pink china is still looking nice. And here you can see my huge esculenta really big this year. Last year I had it in a pot and this year I put it in the ground and it's huge. I will be digging this one up. All the bananas have produced lots of pups which are actually quite big now. Gunnera is absolutely massive. This was a tiny plant when I got this in the summer. This is the Gunnera tinctoria. And as you can see, my tree fern is still looking really lovely. Again, this was just a log when it arrived in, I think it was June. So I'm going to start with this Musa Balsu. I'm just going to be cutting off the leaves, giving the trunk a bit of a trim, and then covering the trunk in fleece. It does have a few pups around the base, so I'm not quite sure whether to just chop those back this year and then mulch over them, or whether I should wrap those as well. I'm not sure, I'll just do the big one first and then see what happens. So I'm just literally chopping off the leaves. So with this trunk I'm going to be cutting it at an angle rather than straight across so that if it does get any rain on it it's just going to kind of drip off rather than soak into the trunk which will cause rot and you want to try and keep as much height as possible if you want it to start producing leaves from that point in the spring so I'm going to cut it about here with my new saw Like that. 
I might actually cut the hibiscus back because it's getting in the way a little bit. I can't believe how tall it got. I wasn't expecting it to get this tall and all I'm going to be doing with this is mulching over the base So with these, I'm literally just going to chop them like that. The stems will probably rot back to the soil during the winter, obviously if there's a frost. It's quite interesting actually, because there's a lady down the road who has a clump of bananas. They're quite big, but she doesn't protect hers at all. She doesn't put anything over them, and hers still come back each year. So once they get to a certain size, I think they will not even need protecting down south. I think I actually could wrap them all together, including all the pups. I might do that. See it all wrapped up nice and snug for the winter. I did end up including the pups, I just literally wrapped around them. Hopefully they'll survive. With the pink chinas you can just wait until the frost kills off the leaves and then just cut them back to the base and just put some mulch over them. So I'm going to be leaving those for now. Ooh, it's quite windy today. I will be digging up this beast, which I might do next. With the Colocasia esculenta, I'm going to be digging up the bulb, which is going to be a bit hard to film, so I might just show you afterwards once I've dug it up and then I'll show you what I do with it. Wow that was hard work digging that up. I'm glad I didn't film it because there was a lot of swearing. I am going to clean this off, brush it off, brush all the soil off and then put it in the sun just to dry out. Later on I'll take it inside and I will put it in the airing cupboard to dry it out. And then all I'm going to be doing is placing it in a paper bag and putting it in the cupboard in my kitchen with a bit of sulphur powder. And then it will start producing a new shoot probably around March or April time. I will chop down the trunk a bit nearer to the, the base, probably about here. Yeah, it had a good, good old root system on it. So next up we have the red Abyssinians and all I'm going to be doing with these is digging them up just like I did with the Colocasia esculenta and dry storing them just exactly the same as the esculenta. So again I will dig them up and then I'll show you afterwards because it's a little bit difficult to film me digging them up. So I've just chopped off all the leaves and now I'm going to dig them up and just put them in a sunny spot for a few hours and then I'll be taking them inside and placing them in a brown paper bag and storing them in the cupboard. I did keep one in a pot inside the house last winter and then just put it back out in the spring but this year I don't have the room so I'm just going to be putting them in a paper bag and storing them in a cupboard. Here it is, it's got a good old root system on it. So as I said, I'm just going to turn this upside down and let all the water drain out of it. Mm -hmm. 
with my tree fern in the next couple of weeks before the first frost come I'm just going to be putting some straw into the crown to protect it for the winter and that's about it for the tree fern depending on whether it's a mild winter or quite a bad one these fronds may go brown and die off but then new ones will come back in the spring or it might be lucky and keep its fronds and then start producing new ones next spring. So with the cannas I'm going to be chopping back the ones that have finished flowering and leaving the ones that are still flowering and producing blooms. I'm literally just going to be chopping them right down to soil level and then mulching over them to protect them and then they should come back next spring. I left some in the ground last year and they came back fine. This particular variety is the Canna Cleopatra. Look how beautiful it is. Definitely one of my favourite varieties. So this Canna Champion is producing a bloom, so I'm not going to take this part of the canna away. I have just cut back the ones that are finished flowering, as you can see here. And then next year they should come back and multiply and should have loads of cannas. I'm leaving the Cleopatras because they're still flowering and they look absolutely splendid just can't bear to cut them down yet. So my next job is covering up the Bengal tiger banana. This particular banana is from the Himalayan mountains so they are hardy here in South UK so I'm just literally going to fleece over it like I did with the muses. I completely forgot about this Heliconia Hawaii that I put out late summer. Usually these would be kept as houseplants, although I did have this outside last summer and then just brought it in in the winter. So really this needs to be dug up and stored with my Colocasia esculenta. The Canna Durban didn't do very well this year, it was very slow compared to the other cannas, so hopefully it will come back much better next year. So I'm just gonna chop this back to the soil level and then mulch over it. So I've got a couple of bananas in pots here on the patio. I am going to chop them back, cover them fleece, and I am going to put the pots in the shed Over here we have my wonderful T-Rex. It's grown absolutely massive. With this one, I'm just gonna wait until the leaves die back and then I will protect the trunk with some fleece. Well, I don't have to do that just yet. Oh, the coleus are looking quite nice still. With any of the begonias, again, I'm just going to be chopping those back to soil level and then just putting some mulch over them. This one, I completely forgot to even mulch over last winter and it came back fine. So I think all the begonias will be all right. Look at the carnage. It's really sad seeing all the leaves on the grass, but has to be done for them to come back in the spring. With the gunnera, this is a gunnera tinctoria, I'm just going to be chopping off the leaves and then covering the crown, do you call it? This part, I'm just gonna be protecting it with the actual leaves. And that's all you have to do with this one. So I'm gonna do that one next. So I've cut all the leaves off. I'm just going to be 
putting them over the top like that. I might weigh them down with some rocks. And that's about it for the gunnera. In regards to overwintering your caladiums, I'm just going to attach a clip of what I did because I've already started overwintering two of them. I just chopped back the stems to the base and then pulled out the bulb and then I'm just going to be dry storing these in a brown paper bag with some sulphur powder and then planting them up again during the springtime. I still have one caladium in my kitchen that's still going strong so I'm just going to leave him for now until his leaves start to go floppy and start to kind of die back and then I'll do the same with him. So I've still got a few more bananas to fleece up and canners to chop back. But apart from that, everything else should be fine. I really hope you found the video useful. If you've got any questions, just please leave them below and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye everyone.